What's up, Internets? This is Fuzzy Talent Screencast number 20. I'm going to be talking about FPDF and making PDFs. And it's not something I really enjoy talking about because I, I hate PDFs. Just the whole idea of taking something on your screen and then etching it to press trees in almost 2013 makes me just want to cry a little bit. But it's one of those realities you have to live with. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a meeting where somebody's carrying an iPad on top of a giant ream of paper. That's just unfortunately still the way the world works. But if you have to make a, a PDF, FPDF is a really good way to go. FPDF is, uh, it's, it's really, it's standalone. So it does not require any other PHP components. It's a PHP library, which is nice. It means you can use it almost anywhere. You can use it uh, if you have just GoDaddy hosting or something where you're on a, a hosted server and you have no control over what PHP modules are loaded and which aren't, it should still work with one, I think, yeah. GIFs will not work unless you have a couple uh, PHP libraries enabled, but otherwise it will just work and it works really well. There's a whole bunch of different um, tutorials and code examples and scripts to look through. It's a really good thing. I use FPDF whenever I have to make a PDF, which thankfully is not very often. Because even making a PDF is just a big pain in the ass. It's just a really bad system. It's, it's made for quality printing, and which means it's not made for, for programmers. It's uh, anyway, not my favorite thing. But the Quality Life Dashboard needed such a thing, and I had to make one. So you can go pick a neighborhood. We'll say pick this one. Neighborhood profile area 73. Go to make a report. There's our neighborhood. We'll select all. Create custom report. Off it'll go. And there's our report. It's got a nice cover page, a map, and all of our data. All our var variables, metrics, measures. They decided to call them variables. That was we actually have meetings where we discuss things like this. And they decided I thought variables was the most obtuse thing to call, you know, what these things are, but they're variables. So there you are. There's the PDF. Let's take a look at how it got made. First, let's see here. All right. This is a PHP, of course, so you'll need to have a PHP aware HTTP server. First tip from Miracle Tobin when dealing with making PDFs, you need to basically buffer the output and not send any output until it's done. If you start sending output on a PDF before it's done, if it's of any consequential size at all, you will start to see weird things, particularly in PDF clients like Chrome and Firefox where they're, they're built right into the browser. You can see weird stuff going on. So the first thing you want to do is start an output buffer at the beginning, and we're not going to flush that sucker until the very last thing. So basically everything sits on the server until everything is ready. We'll set our header and I've got a commented line out for uh, error reporting. Second tip from your Uncle Tobin when dealing with, with this is you won't see really great error messages in your browser if you're sending a PDF. So if you run into a problem and you can't figure out what it is, enable your error warnings and then comment out your line that actually makes the PDF. And you'll be able to see what's going on. So there's our header. We load our FPDF. We're basically passing two things from the Quality Life Dashboard. We're passing the neighborhood we want and all the measures we want. And you can pass no measures and you'll just get a cover page and a map. So the measures is an array. Neighborhood is just a number. 
Now we're going to load two different JSON files, one of which has all our meta. That's this metrics.json. That's all this happy stuff. The other of which is this npa.json, which is actually a geojson file. I usually name my geojson files just json because that way I don't have to teach Apache how to handle, you know, you know, gzip and all that other stuff. Because it knows what to do with JSON that's already in there. GeoJSON is a little more obscure. Plus, GeoJSON is really just JSON. So, this is GeoJSON, but it's named JSON. So, it's going to load that and basically go through. Since what this uh, JSON decode does is basically turn the JSON, which comes back as a string, into a PHP array. So, we can deal with it in PHP. So we're going to go through the GeoJSON and just pluck out the stuff we want into a different array because GeoJSON getting that out every time you can see is, is kind of wordy. Features, properties, blah, blah, blah. So we've got all our stuff loaded into PHP arrays. We're going to extend the FPDF class and just call it PDF and add a footer. The set Y negative 0 0.4 our units are in inches which is a mistake but I started doing it with inches and once you start you, you're kind of committed so we got that Arial italic and we're going to write this text at the footer slightly below the end of the page just negative 0 0.4 with color of black and that's what this is right at the bottom so that's what makes our footer and it's basically going to do that on every page so what this function does is just pretties up this metric number. This number could be null or it could be a number. If it's null or it's not a number, then we write NA there. If it is a number, it's got to check to see. It's going to add commas if it's a really long number. And there might be uh, prefixes like a dollar sign and postfixes like a percentage sign or therms. I think we actually have therms for something. So that basically just takes that measure and applies all that formatting to it. And this saves me a lot of work later on. I can just say pretty up my data. Now we're going to make a new PDF. Inches again. Letter orientation. We're going to add a page for the cover. Now the cover page is really just a big image for the most part and that image was made in Inkscape it's uh, basically that basically all the image stuff I want on there you probably don't want to put text in there I could have written say neighborhood profile area and quality of life study uh, because that's going to be there every time but it will look much better in the PDF if you let PDF handle the text. You won't get any kind of blurring or stretching or any weird stuff. So we basically throw in that image, set a text color and some font sizes. This LN is a new line and uh, basically this units is how big you want that new line to be. So it brings you down a little bit. I'm going to write neighborhood profile area, go down a little more, and write our neighborhood number in an enormous 180 point font. Then we're going to go down a little further and just write quality of life study. And that's it. We've got our whole header. Look, we got a Creative Commons attribution license there, which no one else has noticed, but uh, I'm leaving it in there until somebody tells me to pull it out. Now, we're going to add a new page for the map. This is where things get a little hairy. We've got one bit of code, and I'm going to explain all of this because I can't remember how a lot of it works because it, it hurt my head. This part's easy. We're basically calling a REST service we have to get the extent of that neighborhood. And then what this code right here does is basically just read the XY into an array. We've got to get rid of the, you know, the box parenthesis and all that other crap in it. That's all it does. Now we have this final extent, which has the four coordinates of the box. Then what I need to do is basically, 
And this is ugly. This is ugly. Um, take the extent and figure out proportionally how it fits in a portrait size image and then set the final extent so it reflects that based on the proportion of what it is. So if the boundary is closest on the width, you're going to have to add some more units to the, based on the proportion to the height of the extent. So it's, you're getting a, the right shape of a box. Because you want the shape of the box to be portrait size so you won't get any weird stretching. It was sucky hurt my head. And then just to top it off, I had just throw 250 feet on the end. This is state plane because we're, we're weird. We're, we're in a state. Um, just to add a little bit of buffer so the borders of the polygon are right, not, not right up against the edges. So that, all this is to give you a proper proportional portrait size, letter size box that extent for that particular neighborhood. Even hurts me just talking about it. Then I'm getting that map image from GeoServer and I'm using a WMS Reflect, which means you don't need all the uh, verbose WMS messages. You can do things like give it a width and then give it a bounding box extent and it will figure out the height for you. That's what the Reflect does. It's, it's, uh, it's nice. So we give it that extent. Now another little hip, little little tip from your uncle Tobin. When you specify more than one layer, and you want to do a filter in GeoServer, like a CQL filter, since we have two layers, we have to have two different filters. We can't just have one. Now in the base layer, we don't want to filter anything out. So I'm just going to include semicolon. That means just Basically ignore the filter for the first one. The second filter for the neighborhood, neighborhoods, which is our second layer, I'm just getting the idea of that neighborhood. And what that does is gets just that neighborhood boundary and just that neighborhood label from that layer. And that's what that does. So now we have a map. I also just drew this boundary around it as a uh, wrecked. That sounded bad. Wrecked. Okay. Now we've got a map and a cover page. We're going to make this data report. Now I figured out and had to force a couple of these to fit, but that I could get four of these per page. And so I divided the page up into four areas. And basically what I need is the X and Y for that point, that point, that point, and that point. So we know where to start. And that's essentially what these are. 0.5 X and Y to 4.3 X and 5.5 Y. And that basically is how we divide up that page. So what I do, this is measure per page. I'm taking a count of the number of measures. Say you sent, I want five measures. It's going to divide that by four and get the ceiling of that, which means four goes into five, what, one point, you know, and a fraction. <laughs> Boy, my math just, just went sailing out my head. Um, so it's going to ceiling, so instead of one, that's going to be a two. What that does is you want a page for everything. So. If you didn't have that ceiling, you'd basically just get that one page and you're going to need two to get five metrics. So for each page, for each time uh, you get a ceiling of, you know, each, each time you need a page, it's going to do this create measures function uh, four times, once for each space, if that exists. So say measure count, if they wanted measures zero, and that was actually there and what was passed, it'll run this if it's not, at, like if there's only gonna be one metric on that second page, it would run this first line, but not the second one, because these wouldn't exist. That's what that if statement does. That says create measure, it gives it the X starting point, the Y starting point, and the measure it needs to go on. Then it essentially skips down four, four spots into our 
array of measures. That sounds very complicated, but basically all it's doing is saying we're going to put four things on each page and we're going to run for every page that we need a metric whether there's four things there or not. From there it's pretty straightforward. We do this create measure function that gets the x and y starting point and the measure we're going to use. Then it sets the value in the title. See we do this pretty data to get our pretty data. And that's what goes right there. And you see this multi-cell, you haven't seen that before. When that writes, it basically just wraps and you give it a length it can go and the size of the line when it wraps. Because you can see some of the, these are very verbose people on this project. You can see some of the average year of construction of commercial buildings, you know, things like that, that need to wrap. Otherwise, if you just used a cell, it would just keep on going right across the page and you would be unhappy. Now, a couple of important tips. There, I found there's a lot of important tips in PDFs because they're a big pain in the ass. First, strip tags. PDF doesn't know what ahref equals some crap is. It has no idea. So if you have some text with a hyperlink like that, it's going to write in the text ahref equals something or another, which is not good. Strip tags in PHP is a function that basically just strips out HTML, any HTML tags. So you'll see the text that was in there, but not the tag itself. Second important thing you want, UTF-8 decode. Uh, basically, if you have, uh, um, UTF-8 dashes and parentheses and other types of symbols, it, can, it will come up weird in your PDF. It will just look funny. It'll come up as not what it should be. The UTF-8 decode will take care of that for you. So two important PHP functions to run on these big blocks of text. And that's pretty much all you need to know. The rest is just incrementing down the page a little bit and writing writing all this text. I guess the other thing to know is this about the data actually has two elements to it, the source and how the data metric itself was derived. You can do this type of uh, carriage return in FPDF. That's what adds that space there. All right, we get that, then we do PDF output and then we flush out to the client and they get a nice looking PDF. So that's how that's made and I will put that, that's all in the uh, Git repository for quality life dashboard. Uh, actually, it isn't quite yet, I cleaned it up a little bit for this, let's see. Here we go. Uh, get status. Yeah, get commit dash a and report cleanup. I'm very helpful in my commit comments. Now let's do push it a few origin. Oh, this is kind of cool. I don't know if you'll be able to hear this or not. I'll have to turn it down right away so YouTube doesn't slaughter me. But I set it up so when I do it, I just made an alias for push it to a git push. And when after it pushes, it automatically starts playing Push It uh, from Salt and Pepper. And then I just start dancing at my standing desk. That's why my webcam isn't on. All right, better turn that off. That was fair use, right? Right, YouTube? And then it's all up there. I will put links to that in the show notes. And I should say, when you're watching this on YouTube, uh, when I say there's links in the show notes, I mean there's links on my blog post about this. So you'll find a link to my blog post in the show notes, which will have all this other information. So that's if you just have to make a PDF, if you can't get out of it, FPDF is a good way to go. And you can make a pretty nice report and it isn't terrible. I mean, doing anything with a PDF, is it's terrible, but it's not as terrible as it could be. So I hope that helped, and I will uh, see you later. I don't think I'll be doing another screencast this month, so have yourself a good holiday season. Bye-bye.